Hello everyone, welcome back. I have another Bevel Block episode for you guys today. And most of these sites today will be in Turkey. There's one in North Africa and one in the UK, which I want to bring up, two places that we haven't looked at yet and very rare examples. But before we begin, I would like to give a shout out to History Maze, formerly Lunartica channel. I believe his name is Rob. Now, he is in the same vein of research as myself and Dave Budcat7, Philip at Ancient Alternative View. He is just starting out, but he's making a lot of great videos with some good proposals. He has the eye to see, as I say. He knows the motifs, and he's catching on quick to a lot of the hallmarks that we're talking about in our videos. Uh, I especially like the Time Tracks Bal Balbeck episode, uh, the Double Eagle episode also Sir, I'd like to mention that Albania, one of the sites we're looking at today, their flag is the double-headed eagle, if you want to go into that deeper. Uh, a lot of good videos on here, though, guys, so I highly recommend checking him out. So let's begin in Do Doga, I believe is how it's pronounced, Tunisia, North Africa. And thanks to Philip at Ancient Alternative View for spotting this one. I had completely missed this one. I don't know how, but I think you guys can tell already where they are. How about over here on the right? Some clear bevel blocks, some interesting square holes and processing marks. It's hard to say how much of the wall in the foreground is original. We notice that these bevel blocks are not uniformly distributed. They're mostly over here on the right. You have one here by itself. Some of the fitment isn't that great. Over here on the left there is some interesting fitment though with the small filler stones at corners, small spaces at corners, that is indicative of the stacking style of the ancient builders, but the loose fitment here, I'm not quite sure if the arrangement that we're seeing is original. And same with the temple in the background, you see the walls and how they're made up of much smaller stones. You can also see some of these other secondary structures over here on the left, obvious inferior masonry compared to the larger and tightly fitted blocks. And here's another angle. A better view of the temple. Now I'm not sure it maybe it's just the front porch area that's got the lavish decoration but you notice the coping stones here they stop once they reach this inferior wall and this looks very inferior compared to some of these other elements again these top frieze portions stop. Is this just intended for the porch? Could be. This could all be an original configuration, and they only spent their time on the edge and, and corner elements. I could see that. It's just an interesting juxtaposition of styles. Ah, here's something interesting to note. A stone with a square hole at a corner, and perhaps some other stones down here and over here that might have holes in them. Weird, anomalous holes. And then you can see faint traces of bevel blocks here. See, this one here is a bevel block, and the one below down here, and this one, a kind of a crude bevel block. And then we pay attention to the coarse arrangement again. We see kind of longer stones interspersed with shorter stones. So interesting coarse arrangement. We could follow the coarse arrangement styles and see if that pops up at any other sites and if there's any connections. Something to think about. Here's a good close-up of the front. And we can see over here on the right, some of these pop out to us, they're bevel blocks. And then maybe some, yep, down here on the left, these are bevel blocks. And then I don't see any in the temple structure itself. Maybe these corner, some of these corner blocks are, they have some weird square holes in them, it looks like. Maybe they're all just finely dressed stones, though. Interesting on the columns, the fluting and the weathering. Very heavy weathering here on these corners. Here's a really great high contrast photo. Sorry, zoom in real quick here. You can see how some of the bevel blocks start popping out here, over here, and then these here. See this bevel goes all the way down almost to here. That's interesting. And you see the interesting coarse arrangements again, like I was saying, how they cut out corners and put in small filler stones like here and here and down here. I'm starting a whole album on just the small filler stones. Oh, before we move on, how about this stone here with this circular hole in it? Very interesting. 
and some other interesting older looking column elements here, these singular piece column elements. This one with this little lip on top, this capital piece, and more bevel blocks here. See this one on the corner of bevel block? Very interesting structure. And if you look over to the very far right, and how how look how stark the difference is in the building styles, much cruder, much smaller, lots of mortar. Very interesting site. And just to drive the point home that this might not be the original configuration of this site, we're going to look down at the bottom left hand corner and see these pieces here. Those look like coping pieces for the top. Those don't look like they should be there. Some other weird stones with square holes in them. Interesting course arrangements, right? Not sure how much of this wall was original. Some interesting bevel blocks down here at the bottom. Interesting columns as well. One piece or maybe just a couple piece columns, smooth columns, but very ornate capitals, matching capitals with these. Interesting site. And one last photo here, just a good photo of a bevel block here on the left and some interesting little square hole square holes and recesses peppered throughout the blocks. Interesting stuff. Okay, and from North Africa, we're going to jump over to Turkey for a while, and we're going to look at a few sites in Turkey that I've been gathering up and just haven't had a chance to talk about. Some of them are pretty famous. Some of them you probably never heard of before. We'll try to go a little bit faster here, so you guys probably by now are familiar. If not, please check out the previous episodes so you're more familiar with the hallmarks and the motifs and the concepts that we're talking about. So, first here at Perga, Turkey, some very interesting stuff. We see an inversion of what we normally see. The bevel blocks, the cruder stuff is on top, whereas the finely dressed stuff is on the bottom. If you look up here at the top, you see the bevel block here. It's much much rougher or much more weathered. I'm not sure how you, how you want to put that than the lower portions. Perhaps there's some repair blocks put in to this, but you see some of these older blocks with these small holes peppered throughout them right interesting circular motif in that one tight fitment of the arch is this a secondary arch and reused older blocks that, that's a possibility and then even newer repair blocks maybe and that's why they don't have the holes in them like some of the older examples over here on the right something to think about especially when you look down here at the bottom see how they're cut to fit that's a process that modern restorers use so highly likely that there are some restored elements in this gate and it, around here at Perga. Really nice trapezoidal gate with the incised motif. And in the background, you see really interesting columns, one piece. They might even taper a little bit with the ionic capitals on top. And then a different style over here, missing its capital, but maybe a different stone, darker stone perhaps. Another angle. See, it's actually pretty wide, and some interesting columns in the foreground here. How nice they are, and the material they're made out of. And then another view of that gate from earlier, but now we're looking beyond it. There is a bevel block tower, the remnants of a bevel block tower back here, and we're going to see that in a second. And here, just a good contrast, so you can see more of the peppered holes. I wanted to note over here on the left, you can see how there are some blocks that have the holes. And then the ones right here on the edge of the gate do not have them. I'm going to propose that these might be inserted later repair blocks. Another really good trapezoidal gate. Wide again with the incised motif. Heavily weathered. You can see this crack or this gap here that runs down. Is that from Cataclysm? Could be. And again, another small filler stone at a corner. And then even smaller square holes and some of the corners. Interesting. And actually, the more you look, the more square holes you see. So we're going to zoom in real close. And you see those at the bottom right. And you see how this one is at both corners here. That, that's almost like a damage hole, like we talked about in some of the earlier episodes. And then we'll go over here to the left-hand side. And then we'll see both these standing stones, these flanking stones. Look at the little square holes in them. What could they be for? Look at the, where they're located, low down on the stones. Interesting, very interesting stuff. Uh, and up here even, you can see where we were looking at earlier. There might be a continuation above 
Like there was a row, a vertical row of square holes. That's interesting. I don't believe I've seen that. Here's a great wide shot of that gate from earlier. You can see a lot of the bevel blocks popping out if you look closely. See how the course arrangement varies. It's interesting how that goes. And some of these spaces here along a diagonal. Interesting. The niches above here. Large, we'll just call them large square holes. And then the protruding blocks at the very top. Very interesting. That's indicative of some things in South America, perhaps. I don't know. But very interesting wall. And very interesting the way the gate does not match the rest of the construction. And here is part of that bevel block tower. Now you see on the left, that's where the bevel blocks are. And then we'll zoom in and you can see more of these little holes peppered throughout the entire structure, throughout almost all the blocks, how some of them are bevel blocks here and then it tapers. And then we'll zoom in. I know this is kind of a grainy photo, but you can see on the left, they go from very prominent bevels and then when it goes over here to the right, it gets a lot more finely dressed, but still a few instances of bevel blocks in the lower courses. Very interesting arrangement, very tight fitment, all the arches, right? The protruding stones, you can see how they fit into the square sockets. So there is an example of the decorative installations. And then look very, very close, guys, and see above the keystone pieces, how the pieces above have cuts in them to make the voids like we saw a co-occur and how they fill in and this processing line that goes across very interesting very very interesting sight more of the wall and you can see the very large holes the recesses and obviously the foliage some of the foliage might be obscuring some i'm going to have to assume these were for more installations maybe timbers for flooring or maybe more of those stone installations like we saw earlier more impressive columns and then if we look close at this gateway again like we see in other sites there are these little voids above the gateway and i believe this keystone piece has dropped a little bit maybe this site has settled so that might be a little more pronounced than it was in the past but i think even in the past there was a very small gap and then this gap above maybe that's even slightly triangular or semicircular so that's a repeating hallmark that we see above a lot of gates at a lot of sites across the world. And then inside a portion here, you can see these much more eroded and tightly fitted blocks with small bricks and mortar filled in to repair it. So we're talking about a restored structure. Even in ancient times, see these arches here are all brick. And almost all of this superstructure here is ruinous and repaired materials over here as well all these bricks and over here on the right as well so you can see where the original ancient structure stopped and where they had to use whatever was left of the ruins to try and repair with the inferior building styles of bricks and mortar but again you can see all the little small holes peppered throughout all the blocks right that seems to be following us around at this site and then some more of these columns in the foreground very nice ornate capitals and very smooth i guess one or two piece column drum segments and here's a great high contrast photo that shows you the bevel block tower this reddish color and then of course all this other interesting stuff in the foreground all these little capital pieces and header elements you can see how finely machined or carved all they, they all are cast whatever you want to say but it's all very uniform and precision, elaborate, ornate, very decorative stuff. And if one tower isn't enough, there is a companion tower right next to it, almost as if though this was an ancient gateway in the past. So again, you see, sorry, it's not that great of a photo, but it's one of the only ones I could find that shows both here. You can see how there are bands. You can clearly see bands of bevel blocks and how they differentiate each course arrangement is different some are thinner blocks some are wider blocks same with this one over here wider courses like here and then thinner square courses here very interesting course arrangement and then of course the little holes you see the i guess we'll call those windows and then doorways at the top more windows very interesting 
megalithic construction here. And just think of all the rubble too in the foreground and the sides here and how big these would have been in the past and how nice this would have looked. Something to think about guys. And a couple more angles here real quick. So clearly bevel block, this all looks contemporaneous, all original here. Very hefty, chunky construction. Ashlar blocks, double-faced, interlocking, all very strong. Some blocks L-shaped, look at that. Very strong construction style. And then again here at the front, you can see some more of the holes. We'll zoom in a little bit more. Down here in the bottom, peppered throughout, small holes. Fitment's very tight. You can see the style does change. It does go from more puffy and crude, more up, look at that square stone, small filler stone in a corner, but it's more of a puffy execution, cruder execution around. And then when it gets to the entryway, it does get more precise. So maybe that other gateway is original and that is just the style, or maybe parts of this gate gateway are secondary. Something to think about. But we do see the square holes, so I'm going to have to say these blocks must be ancient and contemporaneous with the rest of the site. And maybe this is just a stylistic choice that they chose to have a nicer, different, differently faced block for their gateway. And then up at the top, I wanted to mention these are interesting coping blocks here that go around. And you can see they probably went all the way around. And again up there. Very interesting. Next, we're going to go to Assos here in Turkey, and I just have to include this site. It's not technically a bevel block site. We can we can argue whether or not it is, but it's definitely some kind of connected site because we're going to see a lot of the same secondary hallmarks right away. You guys see the nubs and the small square hole and the fluted column in the background. Assos has a lot of weird stuff going on, and we'll try to pick up all the instances of it. Now first, the column drum segments have circular holes for pegs that hold them together. Maybe these other square holes were for other installations. Down here at the bottom, it's very interesting that these rows have them. This row has a few. Maybe these ones in below did, but they seem very less pronounced. Maybe they've been knocked off. I have to consider that. But then look at the seam at some of these blocks and how they... I guess we'll say they flare out. It's very interesting. I don't know how you describe that. Is that some kind of a bevel line? I don't know. Very tight fitment. You can see each of the nubs is a slight is they're slightly different, aren't they? This one's more rounded. This is more square. This one has a little point to it. This one maybe had a point to it. This one's more square, more rounded again, and then very rounded down there at the corner. Each little nub is different. They're not uniform, not completely. And there's placement on the blocks also not completely uniform. Very interesting. And this is the Doric style, the very simple capital style here at Assos. And here's something very interesting to point out. Down here in the bottom right, hollow column segments again to lighten the weight of the structure. You see some over here on the very right do not even have any fluting in them. They're just maybe in progress, if this was never finished, or maybe these are just other styles of columns that were here in the past. Some of them are not hollow. Maybe some of these fit together in, a, in, in like a socket, like a large socket way. You see a lot of them laying in the foreground, different ones in the background. The different colors, the color variations in them are interesting. So are all of these original? and why the variation in the hollow ones and these solid ones. And of course the fluting as well. Why do some have fluting and some do not? And here's a great high contrast photo that shows you all the nubs that go around the base. And again, we'll zoom in since this is a really good photo. Note how they're not all uniform. They kind of undulate and each one has a different profile. Is the, are these two on one block and they're rounded versus on one block they're more square, angular, 
and then below the different surface treatment texture on this on these blocks and we might pause for a second i want to bring up another site that looks very eerily similar to some of these lower courses here at delphi now delphi has some interesting architecture that we've already seen but this was one aspect of it that i completely missed in the first go around and this wall is amazing to me now that we're talking about it in the vein of the hallmarks and the motifs. Now, look at the nubs and how they're not on all the blocks, the lower courses, how they're not all uniform. Some have a more round profile, the bottom of the block, others more square, the middle of the block. And then we'll zoom in because this, again, is a great photo. The surface treatment, right? What's up with all the texturing? How is that done? That reminds me of some of the other gates that we saw, Messini. Those gates had the same, those blocks had the same texturing on them. And then, of course, look up here, small filler stone at a corner. How about that? So is this original? I have to say this, this is probably an original configuration, guys, because that is a hallmark, like we say, of the original builders. I'll show you the album right now. I know I've just started, I have all the other photos that have these in their respective albums, but I have just started compiling these. We all know about this stuff, right? Easter Island, Cusco, and the Cori Concha inside. And then, like we were talking about in Coker earlier, there and there. And then another spot in South America. And then at Silistani, there's one. So that's also in Peru. So I have a long way to go, and I'm not the first to look into this stuff. There's plenty of other people who've been looking into these, but I don't think they've gone as deep as what we can go. And I think we can compile a, a much deeper catalog database of these, and we can start connecting all the sites together just through this hallmark alone. So I'll definitely be adding this Delphi spot. We already know about the poly polygonal walls and the bevel blocks there and the keystones, the clamps. So there's a lot of different hallmarks at this site that connect it to the other ancient builder sites. And right there, small filler stone in a corner, that's just a yet another hallmark. So back to Assos, yes, same kind of configuration. And is it decorative? Did, these aren't necessary for lifting, right? Some of the other blocks of similar size don't have them and other courses don't seem to have them or ever had them. And the way they're arranged looks decorative to me or maybe a byproduct of the block making process. And here's another good angle that shows you more of the hollow columns, those ones we saw earlier. They seem to be lightly fluted. We'll say like this one down here has slight fluting. And maybe some of these other ones were in the process of getting their flutes made. So maybe this was unfinished. I'm not sure what to think about all this laying around. Another angle, look at the precision and the tight fitment, the odd placement of the bevels, two on this block, one on this block, one on this block, and so on. The strange little margin in between. I think we might be able to call these the reverse bevel blocks, right, with the pitted interior area that's recessed and then the raised little precision ridge around it. Maybe that's what we're seeing is these little raised smooth ridges at the seams. And then we're going to move over to Butrint, Albania. I've been wanting to talk about this site for a while. Okay, first right away, the Cyclopean polygonal masonry, right? Just like we saw at Katiorin and of course Delphi and a few other places as well. Athens for one. So obviously we know something's going on right away with all these these bigger blocks and then the inferior smaller blocks. So layers and levels to this site. This part here is what's called the Agora. We were just down here I believe in this region and then you can see how it shifts from the large stones in their polygonal style and then it turns into a more uniform coarse arrangement but still strange. Look at these L-shaped blocks and how they fit together. Maybe, or maybe that's a small filler stone at a corner again. And maybe some more instances of that over here on the right. But then you can see the abrupt change to smaller courses of stones with mortar and bricks. Obviously later, if this is Roman, 
this part is the Roman part. You can see how it's been built up against the wall, especially over here. I just want to note, note this. Right here, this definitely looks like it's been incorporated up to the retaining wall. So much later constructions up against something much older. And this is kind of the star of the site, this Lion's Gate. We're going to see a few photos of this region. First of all, you can tell right away the cruder secondary stuff built up to this much more impressive ancient stuff and maybe some reconfiguring as well. I'm not sure how much of this is the original configuration. Now you can see the much smaller opening and then the much larger opening behind. Interesting faceting of those stones again. And then some more square holes at corners again, yes. And these we might even classify as bevel blocks. When we see some high contrast photos, you might even call some of these bevel blocks and some interesting processing marks in them. But there's a, a lion motif above the lintel there. The back side of where we just were is where you can really see it. Now here you can see these angles and the, the small holes at the corners. This kind of stuff looks like Catiorin again and the way they're kind of puffy. And we'll zoom in. You can see there's a processing line on the corners. So there's there's one of the bevels, if you want to call that a bevel block. And the way the courses fit together, very polygonal, especially this one, L-shaped and trapezoidal. And then, of course, all the secondary stuff, cruder stuff above. And also notice how nicely rounded these faceted pieces, these little coping pieces above here are very nicely done. And maybe even some holes above some small holes. Can I zoom in? Yes. These here, very interesting in the corners. And then I think there's some repair mortar going on here, these lighter areas. So they probably repaired it, shorted it up, and then continued on with the wall much later. Here's the opposite view, the other corner. You can see again, there is a processing line going all the way down the corner, some cracking going on and separation, either settling or from cataclysm. And then note the angles on some of the blocks and the fitment. It's kind of, like, kind of polygonal, interesting, trapezoidal. And then the row arrangement, again, very interesting. And then a couple interesting blocks, like this one with a little hole there. Maybe this one down here is a hole. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell with some of these lower quality photos if it's algae or lichen patches or what. But maybe there's some other little holes going on in the structure as well. Another look. Again, very nicely done, continues on. You can see how flat top is here. Really nice, very, maybe, ooh, maybe that's a small filler stone there at a corner. Right there, interesting. But fitment, very, very nice, very tight fitment. And then in the background, much cruder steps, smaller steps and inferior construction in the back. Now here is another look at that gate and they call this a lion you'll, you'll see at the top left there renowned Boutrent gate lion gate most of the attributions on this are lion but not quite sure it's kind of eroded it could be a lion maybe it's a lion taking down a bull hard to tell we'll go with lion but processing line again and we'll zoom back out just to show you the fitment of the blocks on the left how tight they are they're the same as the rest but then some of the fitment over here isn't so good so i'm not quite sure on this lintel and these blocks above was this the original configuration with this larger doorway behind and even the steps you can see how crude they are was that the original arrangement or is this a secondary arrangement I'm not sure one more look again you can see the tight fitment of these stones goes on beyond but then the much cruder stairs, so are they secondary? And then I want to look at some of these other outlying structures. These look original, don't they? Ashlar blocks, two block thick walls interlocking to connect them. Very chunky, hefty, polygonal connections. And this wall with the square holes at the corners again. And the large, chunky, hefty style. Some of the fitment is extremely tight. Like this block, 
very impressive. Okay, next site is the Belevi Mausoleum in Turkey. And this is one of my favorite sites lately, guys. Amazing site. I have this picture as my background right now. I've been staring at it for months. This is an amazing site. I had seen it before in passing, before I was even into the bevel block research. But then thanks to Philip again, he brought this back to my attention. He said, look at the nubs. This site has lots of nubs and interesting blocks. And it's also just an interesting formation. It's a giant outcrop and it's sheathed or encased with casing stones around it. Many of them have been stripped, but there are a few left in the lower courses. So first of all, there's this void in the middle. This is, I guess I'm assuming, where the tomb was, if this was a tomb, you can see how it tapers like an arch. And the inside has a row of square holes here. Hard to find photos of the inside, but you can see there's a row of square holes and probably a matching set on the other side, either a decorative cornice or maybe a, a little roof in here, a ceiling perhaps. And then look at the nice tightly fitted stones down in here. You can see spots where there were clamps right there at the corner. So, and like a lot of these stones here, they had clamps holding the stones together. And then you notice the surfaces, right? We'll zoom in a little bit more. The surfaces of these stones, how they're much finer than the interiors. The interiors are going to be pitted. And this is the style that I call the reverse bevel blocks again. They have a margin that go around them. You can see down here again, this strip of material here, it's raised and is much finely, much more finely dressed than the interior, which is recessed and pitted and has all these processing marks in it. That's not an anomaly of the photo. It's not a shaky photo. That's just a lot of scratch marks on the surface. Even on the bedrock, you can see more of the little scratching, the same processing. And then up here on the left, I wanted to point out perhaps little rows of holes, kind of like we saw in those blocks at Delphi, I've been staring at this for a while. I'm not sure. You can see these diagonal rows of holes, perhaps, little small holes. Is that some kind of processing evidence? And what is this outcrop that this thing is made out of anyway? I'm not even really sure. But a lot of interesting construction elements here. And you can see the base is flared out like History Maze talks about in one of his videos. This is a hallmark that we should be following, the temple at Garni in Armenia nearby has this as well and a few other st structures and temples have this some very interesting stones laying around like this one with interesting recessing in it square holes again and other margins and processing lines a lot of lichen patches on this one you see and other blocks in the background perhaps these went together in the past you can see how they're lined up here now and how the lines continue across the blocks, some evidence of keystone pieces for clamps and other square holes and other blocks with the same raised corners that are finely dressed and then the pitted interiors that are recessed. The reverse bevel blocks is what I call these. Here's a really interesting photo. You can see this is where we were earlier. In some photos there's more foliage than others, but there's only one recess into this whole monolithic structure and then all the cladding of these casing stone blocks around it and we'll zoom in a little bit on this one you can see some square holes and some blocks for pegs maybe to connect some of these have nubs we're going to see a lot more nubs in a second but some of these blocks have nubs on them and then the different surface treatments right the pitted nature versus the very smooth finely dressed and then down here in the bottom, you see rows of bevel blocks. We're going to see more bevel blocks, traditional bevel blocks, in a minute. And there you go. Smoking gun proof, I think, guys. Bevel blocks on the bottom. And then this alternative style on the top, complete with nubs again. And then obvious secondary structures built up to it. But what is going on with these blocks? And then you can see the very finely detailed decorative trim, right? The little motif there that goes along. Very nicely done. And just notice again the arrangement of the nubs. And again, just like at Assos we saw earlier, there's a raised bit 
at the joints. And then down here, this raised bit in between these two nubs at this joint. And again down here, the way some of these blocks went together, the corners seemed to ooze out, right? And then, of course, with the upper blocks, it's again the same situation, a recessed interior that seems pitted, but it also seems kind of ooze, oozing out in some blocks. Maybe a candidate for geopolymer again. I know that's a hot topic right now. We're all talking about it, and there's some really good evidence. I know some people are against it, and there's good evidence against it for some examples, but other examples, like some of these blocks, man, some of this stuff does just look weird the way they decided to finish off these blocks, especially with the nubs and where they are and how they're arranged. Some blocks don't have them again, and they don't seem to always be necessary for lifting. And in this configuration, they look a lot like that Delphi wall as well with the pitted surfacing. Another shot of the interior here. Hard to see some of the details, but obviously some nicely carved blocks, processed blocks with keystones. And then even in these ornate trim pieces, there are nubs in them. Blocks that didn't need to be lifted very high. Why did they have to have? lifting nubs if these are for lifting these seem more decorative but even decorative they're not uniform not uniformly placed not uniformly sized and oriented very interesting and then here a square recess in that piece maybe for a post and maybe there were others that corresponded obviously there's missing pieces another picture of the exterior here a nice overview kind of reminds me of Kentaue's Mastaba on the Giza Plateau has a bedrock or monolithic core with this cladding of stones and stones on top, piled on top here. Very reminiscent of the Kinkawe's Mastaba. And then you can see perhaps there were some other nice cornice elements, other trim pieces that went around near the top as well. A lot of that was probably stripped. And then column drum segments fluted columns, and maybe other cornice elements and trim elements, coping stones, lintel pieces. A lot of the structure has been taken apart. And then a corner piece here. This is very interesting. These rows, vertical row of square holes, perhaps for interlocking the blocks and making all the connections tight at the corners, and then other blocks with square holes or perhaps pegs and interlocking with other blocks. Really good shot of the interior. You can see some different processing of the surfaces. The nice fine treated surface here, margin, and then the rougher surface underneath. And how these are all nicely fitted together, very tight. Different stones, perhaps lighter stones and darker stones, or maybe that's just staining. I have to think about that as well. And then this photo, I'm not sure what's going on with the graph on the right. Uh, maybe they're showing uh, phases of inhabitation and construction. Um, if anyone has any idea on that, I'd like to know. But the photo shows the rear of the monolithic core, so you can get a good idea of the size here, and then some more of the process blocks below. And then this block here with these circular protrusions. It must be some kind of decorative trim, I assume. Square hole here at a corner. You can see there's a difference in the surface treatment. The corner finely dressed and a little bit raised, and then the interior portion is pitted and kind of recessed. And then, of course, these protrusions, again, very uniformly distributed, very precision created, interesting decorative trim, I'm going to have to assume. And then we will look at a couple more sites today and then close it up. I know these episodes tend to go pretty long, but we have a lot to talk about. Now, this one, Eflatun. Pinar, Anatolia, Turkey. This is a Hittite site, and I believe I've heard Chuck at CF Apps talk about it, and maybe a couple other channels, but not many people have talked about it. Now, this is the most famous portion of the site, but I want you all to notice the left and the right hand portion, the lower portions here. They have bevel blocks in them. How about that? And we'll look at some more photos around the site, and we'll see that there are even more bevel blocks to the site. And if this is Hittite, does that mean that the bevel blocks here are Hittite? I don't know. Now right off the bat I want to make a very clear distinction here. There are restoration blocks. These blocks, these really nice finely dressed blocks, 
These are all the rest restoration blocks much later. And then you can see the older blocks in the background. This is part of that wall from earlier. The stark difference in the color and the aging, the weathering on them. So here's a wider angle, and you can see more of it. And on the left and right, you see the margins. They are bevel blocks. And I'm going to assume most of this stuff is original, and there aren't any restoration blocks in these lower courses. Even over here on the right in the foreground, there is a bevel block poking out there. Another angle, closer photo, you can see they go below the water line as well. Very odd margins on some of them, right? They're not uniform. Some of them stick out farther than others as well. And they extend over onto some of these blocks, I think, as well. Some of the sides have bevels on them, I think. And here's a great photo when it's dry. You can see clearly the bevel block layers go lower. They go below the water line. Look at the course arrangement again. The longer blocks and the shorter blocks interspersed again, like we've seen at the other sites. And they go all the way to the bottom, so they have to be contemporary with the rest of the structure. But now here, I want to make a clear distinction. This is a much later, more recent photo. Now look at the course on the very top. These have all been added. They were not there in the previous photos. This is a restoration effort. Uh, like the blocks I showed you earlier, this is an attempt to finish off the site and to make it look better. Now you can tell right away the margins on the bevel blocks don't match the ancient examples. These are all fairly uniform and in, in terms of how much they protrude, in terms of their square dimensions. Now, even it's nice they even tried to make this one around the statuary element, but you can clearly tell even with the pitted interior and the, the fine, they really tried hard to make these look like the ancient examples and to fit them. See how the, the margin is cut off. They cut off the margin. The ancient, exam, the ancient blocks, they would not cut off margins like that in their original configuration. And the obvious uh, less weathered appearance, and then you see they come around and then they put older statuary elements on top just to finish it off. So you have to pay very close attention to restored sites. This is a clear example. They restored, they finished off the top of this site. But then here's a very important photo to show you. This is a very old photo, obviously. Now look, we don't see any walls. Now are they below the water line? Perhaps. But where are the bevel block walls in this photo? Does this imply that the bevel block walls were added after? So what would this be? Late 1800s? Or are they just not apparent? Are they covered up? I'm not sure, but this is a very interesting photo. It, the lack of the bevel blocks in this photo. And then the modern photo. Stark difference, isn't it? Some of these blocks look very recent, very nicely carved. I want to say every single block of the top is very recent. But look, there are some older blocks here, like these blocks here with these nubs on them. These are older blocks. This feature here is older. And I'm going to have to say some of this lower coursing is, lo is older. How much older, I don't know. In that last photo, it is hard to tell. Maybe the water line was right here. And all of that was submerged and silted up, and we couldn't tell, perhaps. But there is a stark difference between the lower courses and the upper courses. And then we're going to look at Philippi, or Philippi, in eastern Macedonia. This site I almost skipped, because when I saw this first photo, I said, no, this has to be restoration. These bevel blocks look too uniform. They look too new. But then there are some older blocks here that are very curious. So yes, some of this stuff is restored. You can see the clear difference in the darker and lighter stones. And I'm going to have to say it's, this is too uniform and too precise to be ancient. And the configuration is not indicative of the ancient examples. Again, this is too nice. The stuff on the left and the right, the lighter stones, these have to be repair pieces. They just do not match the weathering and the surfaces of the other blocks. But obviously there was something impressive here in the past and that they are trying to recreate it as best they can. And this is a very good example of a legacy bevel block construction. They're trying really hard to replicate the ancient style. But they don't quite do it. They don't match the ancient style. Look at it, there's a difference. The margins are different 
on each block they're kind of different this block had a couple nubs on it one's broken off some other marks you notice the foliage and how that's probably growing in some of the square holes you see the repair blocks this obvious lighter stone so there are repairs to the site and you can see the inferior fill now this might have been the original configuration and they just wanted these outer cladding stones to be tightly fitted and megalithic or maybe this is secondary but I'm not sure what other reason this wall would be here than to hold back all this material so have to speculate on time periods construction here we may also speculate about reconfiguring and recycling stones and is this the original configuration of these stones more very nice gates maybe they're trapezoidal slightly with the incised motif again but then of course all the rubble and brick fill is this secondary I have to think so and this gate was recycled and then of course you see in the background the much superior blocks of the lower structures here these corner pieces of maybe this ancient temple some of this stuff looks really weird though you'll see over here on the left where all this brick has been added could the upper structure survive without any of this lower brick addition so it really makes you wonder if the upper courses are recycled you'll notice they are heavily weathered and the corners seem pretty banged up compared to the lower courses which seem a lot better so has all this stuff above been restacked not sure with the bricks as well these walls are these secondary walls is this a recycled site there are some interesting processing marks in some of these lower courses like over here on the right repeating rows of square holes is this the original spot for this block or has this been recycled and it's not obviously apparent right away but you start zooming in and you can see that these are in fact bevel blocks it's kind of a grainy photo we'll see more but many of these megalithic blocks these larger blocks are bevel blocks another angle of that corner now I really don't know what to think with all this brick and mortar and this upper structure is this the original configuration and then the lower course of, as well with is this later brick or is this contemporary brick it's a weird juxtaposition of this nice stonework with this much cruder fill in between now you can start to see all the bevel blocks popping out the different surface treatments the pitted surfaces versus the finely dressed surfaces the thin courses and then even over here on the right more bevel blocks and more pieces with rows of holes in them is that the original configuration and then the arch obviously repaired with much newer blocks these lighter blocks another good angle here I love this angle because this shows some nubs this site has everything see here a nub on that block and then smaller nubs on these smaller blocks these are obviously not for lifting I don't know why these are here very interesting locations on the blocks and the fact that they're only right here they don't seem to be anywhere else or have have been anywhere else in the past none seem broken off anywhere there do see some seem to be some interesting blocks it's kind of grainy but you can see this row of square holes here bevel block there and then just like before the row of square holes perhaps some of these cornice elements here see how this is broken off perhaps some of those went into those holes other decorative elements maybe there's some other nubs up here as well and around the corner some more of these square hole rows here and here very interesting note the columns here and the capitals on them very intricate capitals ornately carved or made and the very interesting one piece columns very interesting is that granite some kind of hard stone and what are the capitals made out of is that a lighter softer stone geopolymer more rows of square holes over here on the left and then interesting more of that filigree that nice decorative trim up here and you can see how much of the structure can withstand being destroyed and still remain standing here so is this an ancient repair to shore up the structure the bricks I'm gonna to have to assume that but it's very impressive that the, the upper structures could even withstand that much of the lower structure being destroyed and removed very impressive one more look a little farther away see the nub the nubs 
bevel blocks, square hole rows, cornice elements, very interesting stuff, very ancient temple, probably with a very long history. You see other pieces below here, these lower portions that were foundations for other structures that aren't here now. So this site has probably seen a very long and chaotic history. And then lastly today, guys, I'd like to look at this site, Barden Mill, Northumberland, UK. Now, thanks to Philip at Ancient Alternative View for finding this. He is the first one to find bevel blocks in the UK. Now, if you look for bevel blocks in the UK, you will find a lot of legacy structures, a lot of castles, and much later structures doing this as an imitation, a legacy of the originals. But here in Northumberland, I think this is an original configuration, an ancient example of bevel blocks, which is extremely rare in the British Isles. And the only other sites that I've seen that look anything similar are the sites like Glendalough in Ireland that Charles Koss has shown us with the nubs on those blocks. That might be a connection as well, guys. So there may be a few ancient sites in the UK, in the British Isles, that are connected to the bevel block builders. But I'm going to have to assume that many of those sites have been destroyed, reconfigured, and are probably mixed in with a lot of other structures by now. But here at this arch, you can see the bevel blocks and the much later, cruder, smaller courses of blocks that have been used to shore up this area and turn it into uh, a pasture and to keep farm animals in and out, I assume. So that about does it for today, guys. I would like to point out that I'm working on some other albums. I'm working on the Bed Frame Sarcophagi album. So there are some interesting things being put into here. Uh, I haven't got all the attributions correct yet, and there's still many more to find. This is in Pumapunku, for example. It doesn't match the others in location, but that definitely looks like a similar processing mark to some of the lids. We'll talk about a lot of that stuff later. And then I also added a strange sarcophagi album. This album is just for sarcophagi that won't fit into some of the other examples. Both of these albums are very early on. I have a lot more to add to them. They're going to be featured in the new upcoming Pandora's Boxes videos whenever I get those finished. But this one has a lot of weird ones in it. It's the, I'm, I'm not even sure about all the attributions. Some of them I do know. For example, I believe this one is the Sobek Hotep sarcophagus very interesting quartzite huge very crudely made on the outside but precision interior uh, these are from palau they have nubs on them uh, the mancare the only one like it and is lost to the sea because the ship that was transporting it to britain sank uh, another one a ness huet net ness hueft nut this one is very interesting the grain in it some more of the plow, and then this one, the Gonaim, the famous alabaster sarcophagus with the sliding door. So we're going to have a lot of interesting things to add to this album and the bed frame sarcophagi album. A lot of interesting boxes in Egypt and all over the world that we need to start looking at. So thank you guys again for hanging out with me, and we will talk to you next time.